Suppose you have the side distance field of a sphere, then you can render it like so using the ray marching technique. Currently, it looks a little bland, so let's calculate the normals of the sphere using the central differences method. Once we have the normals, it's trivial to add fog lighting to make our scene look more realistic. And finally, we can add multiple layers of noise to transform the simple sphere into a mountainous planet. With ray marching, you can also have multiple objects in the scene and blend them together in a smooth manner. You can add two shapes together as you see in the center. You can subtract one shape from another as visible on the left, and you can even take the intersection of two shapes as you see on the right. Once you're more comfortable with ray marching, you can make really intricate diagrams like Inigo Quiles does for his snail shader. Now obviously there are a lot of advanced techniques being used here, but the core concept to sculpt the shader is ray marching. Needless to say, ray marching is a very useful technique to add to your shader toolkit. Let's take a look at the algorithm behind it. We start by creating an SDF function that can give the closest distance to each object in the world. In this picture, let's assume that we've predefined an SDF that takes the union of a triangle and two rectangles. So essentially, we have a function that given any point in the space will give us the distance from that point to the nearest point on the SDF. We set up a ray origin. This can be thought of as the camera, and we march in a specific direction until we get really close to the SDF. You could march along this direction in very small increments, say 0.1, but that'll take a long time. So in each step, we can instead check the SDF function. In the first iteration, we'll notice that the SDF returns a five. That means that it is possible that the SDF is anywhere on this circle. We know, looking at the image, that it's right over here, but the algorithm doesn't know that. So we know that we can move along this five units in this direction, and then we check the SDF function again. At this point, it'll hit some point over here. But we see that visually, the algorithm doesn't know that, so it's gonna say, okay, well, I know that the distance from the current point to the SDF is about one. So why don't I move across one? So eventually it'll keep going and keep going until it hits this point right here. Here, it's gonna get the number two from this point. And so it's gonna move two to the right direction. And then when we check the algorithm again, this time the STF function is gonna return a very small number, really close to zero. And that's when we know that we can stop running our algorithm because we have hit the edge of the STF. You may have noticed that if we shoot a ray in a different direction, it's possible that the STF keeps getting bigger. So for example, if we choose to shoot the ray instead of in this direction, somewhere over here, in, in this case, we can have a predefined number for how far we want the ray to march, say like a 50 units or so. And if the ray marched at least 50 units and you know it's not hitting an STF, then we can just exit early. And that's the basic algorithm for ray marching. Let's take a look at the code. I just wanted to give a quick shout out to these two helpful resources. One is from this person named Michael, and the other is, of course, Inigo Kilaz's website. So the first thing that we're going to do is, as always, set up our UV coordinates. This time we're going to set up the UV coordinates from negative 1 to 1 on the X and negative 1 to 1 on the Y axis. And then we can call our render function. Now this is going to feel like a little bit of code but just sort of push through because setting this up is definitely the hardest part of ray marching. So the first thing we're gonna do is set up our ray origin and the ray direction. The ray origin is gonna be at zero, zero, which is right over here, and negative two in the Z axis, which means it's sort of coming towards us. And the ray direction is gonna be based on the UV coordinates, and it's, it's gonna to go toward the screen. And essentially, we're gonna perform the ray marching algorithm by passing in the ray origin and the ray direction, as well as the maximum distance that the ray can travel. Now this is something that I've defined all the way up here, as well as with a few other constants, but that's just something that you might want to predefine. And essentially, if the distance returned from this ray march function says that uh, it is less than the maximum travelable distance, that means it hits something. And if it hits something, then we can display a color. Let's take a look at what this ray march function is doing, and essentially this is the loop that we had discussed earlier. We set up the current position to be the ray origin, plus the ray direction times the 
this the total distance it's traveled so far. We accumulate this distance every single time in the loop, but in the beginning it's going to be zero. We perform our map function, which contains the the world SDF, and if the result of that is less than a very small uh, amount, then we break because that means we hit something. Otherwise, we just sort of increment the distance. And if the distance is now further than the furthest it can travel, we also break. So these are just the two uh, break conditions. And eventually, we just return the distance. And let's take a real quick look at this map function. Again, I know this is a lot, this might be a lot to sort of digest, but this is sort of the basic ray marching. And essentially, here, what we're saying is we're creating a sphere S SDF, putting it at the center with a radius of 0.5. And of course, if I were to save this, you'll see that we get our simple little circle on the screen. Now, the next step is to just update the map function to give you a better understanding of how the mapping works. What we initially set was just the sphere. But now what I'm gonna do is add a plane. Plane takes in a, a different parameter. The main thing that we wanna think about is a normal here. So the normal is facing up in the y direction. So if I were to save that, you'll see that there's sort of this plane and then there's this sphere. And that's the very simple version of a ray marcher. Now, obviously the next step is to add lighting. What we wanna do is inside of this if statement, determine the normal. The important thing here is that we are getting the normal at the specific point. The normal function is just like takes the difference between very small differentials on the x, the y, and the z axis. And once you have that, you can normalize that and that will give you the normal. So let's go back here. And so if I were to save that, then you'll see that we get our normals like this. And of course, once we have our normals, then it's pretty easy to add lighting. So we can add diffuse and specular lighting. And you know, this is something that hopefully you guys are already familiar with, but if not, I have made a video on this before so you can check it out. But essentially, we're gonna get the light color and the light source. We're going to get calculate the diffuse strength, and we're also gonna set up the specular strength and calculate the specular lighting. And of course, lighting is equal to diffuse plus specular. So we can set the color to be whatever the lighting result is, and then we get our basic lighting. Now, one more thing I wanna do over here is just add a little bit of gamma correction so that the lighting looks a little better. Cool, so now we have calculated the normals and added lighting to our scene, so it's starting to look better already, but one thing we are definitely missing is shadows because when there's a sphere here, there should be some sort of shadow here. So let's take a look at how to do that. And so in order to calculate the shadows, we're actually gonna perform the same ray marching algorithm, except this time the ray origin and the ray direction will be different. The ray origin will be where the point is, plus a very small amount on the normal. And this is just to hide some artifacts. And the ray direction is actually gonna be to the direction of the light. So for example, if we were at a point right here, we want to go from this point to the light source, which we know is somewhere over here. So what the algorithm is gonna do is do a ray march. And if we hit something in our world that prevents us from going from this point directly to the light source, then we know that we have a shadow there. So that's what we're saying here. So we're gonna calculate the distance to the light source. So basically from this point, to the, to the light source, we wanna be able to go directly there. And if we can't go there, right, if the distance from this ray march is less than the distance to the light source, then we have a shadow. If we have a shadow, what we can do is set the color and multiply it by, you know, a very uh, low, a very dark gray. And if I were to save that, then you'll see that there's a small shadow here because the light source is somewhere over here, the sphere is here, and it's a little bit above the plane, so we would expect the shadow to be somewhere over here. So the last thing that I wanna go over is this idea of smooth uh, union. So basically right now what we're doing is taking the minimum of the sphere and the plane, which looks good because it gets us to have both of these on the scene. But if I were to oscillate it, you'll see here that um, you know, there's nothing interesting happening. We're just sort of taking the minimum, but there's a method that, which is basically the idea of um, smoothing this out. So what we can do instead of taking the min is perform this 
smooth union function, which looks a little like this. It's just a little bit of math that even I fully don't understand, but you know, you could just sort of take the function and understand its parameters. And if you were to save this, then you'll see that you get this sort of smooth um, mixing between the sphere and the plane as it goes up and down. And that's essentially uh, what the union operation does. There's also like intersection and then there's uh, subtraction, but you know, you can just sort of find these functions elsewhere and, and you should be good to go. And yeah, that's gonna be it for this video. Hopefully now you have a better understanding of the ray marching algorithm. If you've made it this far, then I'd really appreciate it if you could just hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm and consider subscribing for more videos just like this. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.